Y'all hear my music? I love it loud. It's in the some see it and some cannot see the changes. This year, music is not mine. It belongs to Teddy. The copyright is not mine, but it's time for us to wake up. Here we go. What are we talking about today? Transformation. Well, the video that I did on Pluto um, being a active energy for transma transformation um, kind of did its own thing. So I'm gonna come back and give information on that. But first, I wanna start with Romans 12 and two. And it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. And I, I think that first we have to distinguish what God is, who God is. And Jesus did tell us that the kingdom of God was within us. Um, you can go to the scriptures and look it up. I'm not gonna give you all the scripture numbers verbatim, but if the kingdom of God is within you, then that means that you and I have to transform any ill mannered thinking or maladaptive behavior in order for the kingdom of God, which is good to come forth, right? All right, so in my um, last video, I was talking about temptation and I wanna reiterate on um, John, cause sometimes I'll get on a tangent. My mind is out here um, pulling at energy and information to give to help others and um, the scripture that I really wanted you to look at was James 1, all right, 14 through 15, and it helps to identify the desires of the flesh. When you're in transformation, you're denying the desires of the flesh, and what the energies um, are doing at this time, even with us being in isolation, is causing us to think on the past. Um, we are thinking about how we used to go to work, how we used to do things, and used to is over. I mean, today is a new day. Many Christians will recite scriptures. This is the day of the Lord the Lord has made, and the Lord has made a new day. And so why are we thinking about yesterday or trying to hurt other people? Um, the, com the, the, the comforts of our heart want to be gratified, but it's not in hurting others. So transformation means that... Um, I'm letting go of something, I'm letting it die, which is what Pluto does. And I am allowing a rebirth of uh, a part of me that I didn't know come forth. And so even when we go into John, um, where Jesus and his mother are talking in chapter two of John, I'm gonna pull it up. And um, she wanted him to make the wine. Um, and he said it wasn't his time. I want to recap on that because of the video that I made earlier this week on that where the video was kind of hyperactive. I don't know what's going on or um, we know the energies are um, coming into the world and changing things, but it's working on technology and Uranus has a lot to do with that. Um, the water bearer, by the way, remember that as we go on, Uranus is the water bearer. And um, so it's pouring in things that people are not used to, even shock value, which is going to change your life, the transformation that is upon us collectively. So um, let me go back. Um, Create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. All of this is transformation. Um, John 2. Thanks for waiting. I get um, really excited. So in John 2, what we have is um, Jesus and his mother in the Cana, in Cana of Galilee. And um, his mom, they're at a marriage fest, right? And um, I was speaking on the fact that when Jews are in festivities, they always have wine. It's not the wine that um, we uh, have taken.
paste that are used in the communion, which is grape juice and crackers, but they actually drink wine. Um, there are um, ways that were not to get drunk, but it was to celebrate. And so that's what wine was about. Anyway, um, in the second verse of John 2, it says, and both Jesus um, was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus says unto them, they have no wine. So this was not orderly. It was out of order for any kind of festivity with Jews to be going on and not have wine. Um, Jesus says unto her, woman, what have I to do with this? Um, my hour has not yet come. So he, he was referring to the hour of his change, the hour of transformation, because, you know, uh, when we study Christianity, a lot of times people believe that Jesus was already there, but it was a designated time for everything, even for the kingdom of God um, and him being the son of God to wake up and begin to create the miracles because miracles were not created until this here happened. He gathered disciples before um, the miracle time started happening. So anyway, Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not come. Um, his hour meant that there would be a change. Even, you know, with the cross and the, the resurrection, there would be a change in him. And so that's why he had to go through the crucifixion because there would be a change to come in him and everyone that followed because as we go on in the story, the Holy Spirit would come and it would become a transference type of um, um, ad advocate holiness that we would all get that would change the desires of our heart, the flesh, right? And so um, his mother says unto the servants, the servants are the ones that are working for him. And these are spiritual servants. Um, so this is a prayer conversation, um, whatever he says unto you, do it. And so whenever he prays, do it. This is what his mother's um, spirit is saying to the spirits. And how powerful mother is she because, uh, or we want to look at because she was the one that carried him. And so she could speak things into his life to get him to the place that he needed to, regardless of what was already imparted in him, which is no um, different than what he has been trying to tell us that we are all ye little gods, and you can go into Psalms and pull that up. However, um, the fact that it matter that she's speaking to the spirit realm concerning him, and in verse six, um, things begin to happen. Uh, it says, and there were set, there are six water pots after the manner of firking, uh, firking uh, purifying the Jews, um, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said, and number seven, unto them, fill the water pots with water. All right, so after his mother speaks, there's an activation of um, him um, beginning to possibly think about, or um, the uh, activation is saying, it's time for you to do this. So um, her part of speaking activated him into this. So when we look at the fact that they had no water, or wine, I'm sorry, and it was water there that could be changed to make what was needed come to pass. We see the um, um, activation and we also see the works of energy um, that flows through our bodies. Um, that energy couldn't come from anywhere but planetary um, positioning because as it is in heaven, so it is in earth. A lot of people have tried to um, persuade us that there's no activities in heaven, but the heavens were created before the earth. So the planetary energies um, prompt us to be tempted to do something wrong or not. The changes that come about in us as individuals is the spiritualization of our um, body within the organs, the cells, um, the anatomy, and out of that transformation comes the new being. Well, if you change water into wine, which is what Jesus did, he changed the composition of water into wine so that the festive activity of this marriage um, would continue on and be a blessing as it had been written, all right? So the composition of water and wine are totally different. 
there's something on a molecular level that has to take place in order for mind to be changed. And it's just not a miracle. It is a miracle because we read it, but when we go in and we're going deep like Pluto would take us, what we're doing is investigating spiritually what really happened. And it's not that I need to really know what happened, but people need to know that there is possibilities of miracles. The miracle can only happen in our lives as being transferred, uh, transformed from wine or water to wine when we allow transformation to take place, when we allow ourselves to be uh, purged, to be reconditioned to the word of God. And that means that the mind, the body, and the spirit is going to change. That means that I'm practicing also to be different than I was yesterday. So how do I come up with the energy part? Well, I'm a Capricorn. And it's very hard for many Capricorns to change their ways concerning greed, um, materialism. But if I came here to be that proven point and many others, then I'm going to listen to my heart and mind from the Christ pers perspective. And I'm going to give this information. The behaviors that we have as fleshly men and, and women are not conducive to the miracles that could happen in our lives. Therefore, if I allow myself to be in a place where I accept that I was wrong about something and I can be transformed to not create the same habits or the same situations, then that means that there is a miraculous change in me as well as in you, right? It's my behavior. Yes, I call on the Holy Spirit. Yes, I pray. But I can't keep diverting to temptuous kind of situations and think that I'm going to be in a place where I'm going to have the life change that I expect. I have to continue the course of change and show that I am a work of God. So here is an understanding of how the water changed. The water is water. A miracle composition came about from him speaking over it, praying over it. But where did the prompting come from? The energetic energy of Pluto and the transformation was taking place. Pluto is the planet of birth and death. We must die to ourselves in order to live the abundant life. Jupiter is the planet of expansion. So now people are hearing about the water being turned to wine or you changing. And all of Jupiter is expanding this spirit, this energy all over the world in order for the world to become a better place. This is, you know, understanding the conjunct with Jupiter, because some people, they, they caught up in the fact that they can't do nothing. Maybe you can't do nothing because you don't need to do nothing, right? And then you have Saturn's energy. Saturn's energy tells us that until you learn your lesson, I'm gonna keep you in the same place. Much like the children of Israel going around the mountain, they keep doing the same stuff. No change in their lives, but they have no accountability. They're blaming Moses, right? It ain't Moses' fault. It ain't nobody's fault. It's yours and mine. When we are ready to accept that it's time for us to change bitter hearts, anger, jealousy, then we can be transformed as well into new wine. Get this. How can you put old wine into a new wine bottle? It's not possible. It don't work. It don't even taste good. How can you put new wine in an old bottle? This ain't happening. And vice versa. Old wine skin is not going to hold new wine. So we have to come together and really get to a place of prayer, psychologically understanding ourselves. The conflict that you have today is not your brothers and sisters, it's you. Read that word and accept that you have peace now as you release who you have been. Oh, it takes work. And let me tell you something. Transformation, it is painful because it means that my whole mindset got to change from what it has been. I thought everybody was doing me wrong, but it was me and my choices, right? This is how it really goes. So until we 
uh, change that mindset and we begin to think about how we made choices and we're going to be stuck. How about collectively? We're stuck, but this is good. So email me at IFW Builders for classes or one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Um, we also have a women's meeting where they're going to be unleashing the truth of who they are Wednesday at 5.30. Uh, you can email me on that and um, always know that you can get the truth here because I'm a transparent person. Why? I've been through processes. I've been hurt, been broken, but I am adamant and I am, you know, uh, determined to show that there is a God. That's not forced belief, but to know that I have changed. That's me, number one, and others will see it. And I will become an infectious uh, piece of life in their lives. I will become infectious, um, used by God to change lives. That's my purpose. And so um, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Again, email me at ifwbuilders at gmail.com. Become a part of our movement. And so we'll talk to you soon.